Using a controller to film complex cinematics in Digital Combat Simulator instead of a keyboard. This is all possible due to the magic of Steam input. It's extremely underrated. I wanted to create a way for people who want to get into filming in DCS but are overwhelmed with all the keyboard combinations. So this Steam Controller input tool was the best option, and it should be a turnkey solution for aspiring DCS filmmakers and experts. In order to follow this tutorial, you will need the following. An Xbox controller of some kind, Steam installed on your computer, and of course, DCS itself. Your copy of DCS can be either the Steam version or standalone. For this tutorial, I will assume that you own the non-Steam version of DCS. First, plug in your Xbox controller or connect it wirelessly to your PC so Windows will install the basic drivers needed. Open Steam, Steam Settings, Controller. You should see your Xbox controller shown at the top. Down below, enable Steam input for Xbox controllers and close the setting window. Add DCS to Steam as a non-Steam game by clicking the button on the lower left corner of Steam. Navigate to your DCS installation and add the DCS EXE of your choice. Both the multi-threaded and standard EXEs are okay, but choose one or the other. Find the DCS EXE you just added within your game's library on the left side of Steam and click on it. Now on the right side of Steam, you will see a sprocket icon. Click the sprocket, Properties, Controller. Then enable Steam input for DCS itself. Close the window. Now next to the sprocket, you will see the controller icon. Open it. In the DCS controller layout window, you should see some dialog towards the top that says Browse Community Layouts. Click on that dialog, then click Community Layouts. Then search DCS Filming. Find the layout called DCS Filming V3 created by Crow. But in the future, I plan to push out small updates to my controller layout so you may even see a version 4 or 5 of my controller layout listed here, depending on when you're watching this video. Click on the highest version number you see listed, and then at the bottom you will see an option to apply this layout. Apply it and close the window. Now launch DCS with Steam by clicking the play button. Now I need to explain something real quick. Not all aircraft share the same supported camera types that exist in DCS, such as object-free camera. If the aircraft doesn't have a certain camera type programmed into it, then you simply cannot access that camera type while using it or playing a replay from it. This filming tool that I created was made with the idea people could use it to film in spectator mode or from a multiplayer server track file. However, it should work for most of the purchasable aircraft. But at the end of the day, it's better to use a multiplayer server track file to film with anyway. Once loaded in, press Escape and go to the control settings in DCS to make sure that DCS did not automatically apply any commands to your Xbox controller. If it did, make sure you clear out any commands it applied to your controller, including the accesses. Tap once and hold down on the D-pad for the menu to appear. You can see there are some different options you can select in the radial menu. You can select them by pressing the direction on the D-pad directly or without letting your thumb off of your D-pad. You can move the dial till it selects the one you want. You do not need to hold down and wait for the menu to appear in order to select a menu option. You can also just tap the direction on the D-pad. This is very useful for cycling to the next aircraft by tapping right on the D-pad, for instance. Let's check out object-free camera. Normally, when someone wanted to film with object-free camera, they would have to remember what keys on the keyboard to use to move around in object-free. But this tool does all the thinking for you. Every time you switch to a camera type, the controller layout automatically switches the inputs under the hood to the inputs that specific camera requires. You can pan left, right, forward, or backwards using the left analog stick, and you can orbit by using the right analog stick. 
click and hold the left analog stick to move the camera up and click and hold the right analog stick to move down. The front triggers control the zoom function. Use the left trigger for zooming out and the right trigger for zooming in. Press B button to reset the camera position. Hold the Y button to move around quickly. Press the left bumper to activate keyboard rate movement to slow. Press the right bumper to activate keyboard rate movement to fast. And press the X button to bring keyboard rate back to normal. Press the select button to make mouse movement slow. And press the start button to make mouse movement normal. FYI, the right analog stick is emulating mouse movement and the left stick is emulating keyboard movement. Keyboard and mouse rate modifiers will only affect certain camera types. Now let's look at the free camera option. You can see that you control this view, much in the same way as object free camera, except for the fact that you can't move up or down. You can't move up or down because the F11 free camera does not have a function for it as far as I can tell. But you can still change your altitude by flying forward up or down with the left analog stick. Unlike object free camera, F11 free camera requires you to hold down the associated keyboard button to change the movement speed. So in F11 free camera hold left stick click to move slow and hold right stick click to move fast. Regardless of what camera you're using, the triggers will still control the zoom function. Lastly, let's check out the Super Carrier camera. Selecting this camera will also change the radial menu to reveal some special carrier-only camera options. To cycle between catapult crew, you must first select a catapult. You can return to the normal menu by selecting any non-red options. One final tip. Object-free camera is probably what you're going to use the most. You can also use object-free camera to place the camera inside the cockpit to get GoPro-style shots. But in order to do that, you have to exit DCS and edit two files. Please! Damn it! Hate this hacker crap! The first file is found in your main DCS installation directory. Open config folder, view folder, and open view.lua in notepad. Find the line called camera to unit model collision. Then change true to false, all lowercase. Then save the file and close notepad. The second file is actually the track file itself. What I mean is the track file that you want to use to play a replay from has to be edited. You can open the track file in a program like 7-Zip to explore it, but do not extract the track file. Once you open the track file in 7-Zip, open config folder, view folder, and open view.lua in notepad. Find the line called camera to unit model collision then change true to false, all lowercase. Then save the file and close notepad. Then 7-Zip will ask you if you want to update the archive. Click OK and close 7-Zip. In conclusion, this Steam input tool that I created is meant to be a quality of life improvement to you as a DCS filmmaker. But there are still some more complex view commands that exist in DCS. If you have a PS4 controller or some other kind that is not compatible with my layout, just know it is technically possible for you to create one yourself using Steam input. To improve your footage even more, I recommend you use Track IR with the precision function toggled on. You can also use Voice Attack for some other common commands like Fast Forward to use on a track file.